Other composers attract an audience. Chopin attracts a congregation. I can't prove this, but I'm certain it's true. Within a 20 kilometer radius of wherever you are, someone is either playing or listening to Chopin's music. There was nothing romantic about Chopin's stay in Mallorca in 1839. Diagnosed with tuberculosis, with winter setting in and having been evicted from his rented house, Chopin, his lover Georges Sand and her two children needed to find another place to live and quickly. A few weeks earlier, Sand had purchased an option on three cells in an abandoned monastery in the village of Valdemosa. That's about 20 kilometers from Palma. Perched halfway up a mountainside, the monastery was difficult to access because roads were non-existent. One Spanish travel writer wrote, what they call a road is a string of impassable precipices and the unfortunate traveler journeying from Palma is confronted with death at every step. On one occasion, Chopin's carriage was stuck in a ravine and almost swept away during a rainstorm, and he and Sand were simply abandoned by the local driver. Still, once they'd arrived at the monastery, Chopin and Sand were overcome by the majestic views of the surrounding countryside. Sand declared, whatever poet and painter might dream, nature has here created. Chopin likened his cell to a tall, upright coffin with enormous vaulting. It was a prophetic image. The rains that winter went on for days without end. At night, the little party attempted to cheer themselves up by relating the events of the day, or perhaps as a special treat, a glance through the portfolio of pictures that Sand's son Maurice had sketched that day. Sand's autobiography contains a wonderful pen sketch of Chopin's composing process. His composing was spontaneous, miraculous. He found ideas without looking for them, without foreseeing them. They came to his piano sudden, complete, sublime but then began a labor more heartbreaking than I've ever seen. The autograph page of the G-sharp minor prelude makes the point. It wasn't enough for Chopin to cross out a wrong note or a wrong bar. Those mistakes had to be obliterated so completely that nobody would know what his first thoughts had been. And all this with the wind howling down the nearby ravine and the rain beating mercilessly against the window panes. When the downpour eased, a thick mist sometimes rolled down the mountainside, enveloping the monastery in its wintry shroud. Under its cover, the eagles and vultures which circled overhead would swoop down and snatch the sparrows perched on the branches of the trees, just outside Sand's window. Valdemosa was a very different place in winter than the summer paradise Georges Sand had expected. <laughs> 